this has upset them in a way that you could see them splitting off. I remember it wasn't that long ago when the Tea Party was claiming we're not Republicans, we are a completely independent party, don't lump us in. Do you think we could actually see a split? Keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> this is a good, this would be a good thing for everybody, starting with the Republicans. I think if they could get that distance, right? Um, you know, the Tea Party will break away. Maybe some sensible voices can be heard finally. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome to Give Me Five, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Maher and Bobby Ghosh, who I'm not sure exactly who he is, uh, hoping that for the good, again, for the good of the Republican Party, uh, the Tea Party splits away, the party breaks in two over disagreements, over immigration, etc., and, uh, and it'll be so good for the Republican Party. I love, uh, it, it's heartwarming when Democrats, left-wing liberals, are looking out for the betterment of the Republican Party. Then comes in author Max Brooks. I believe he's the son of Mel Brooks and Anne Bancroft. Get a load of this. You know, this has happened before in history. In Germany in the 20s and 30s, there was this right-wing reactionary element that was so terrified of anarchy and communism that they said, you know what, there's a group of street thugs that are real ideologues, and they're willing to take it, and they're willing to bloody themselves. And, you know, once they get into power, we can control them. And that was why they backed them. Is we can control this. The Tea Party are the Nazis, according to, to, to this writer. Now, you would think the son of Mel Brooks <laughs> would know better. You would think anybody with an education would know better. The Tea Party, analogous to the Nazis, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, the president yesterday made villains out of the Tea Party again by name. But this was on Friday before the president did that. Andy Dean, talk show host, raised an objection. I think he was the only one. Watch. And what they didn't is that a realize... Stretch? Nazis versus the Tea Party who just want smaller government? What is true is that ideologues are well, only loyal to ideology. And, and also, I don't know, I mean... It's, the Tea Party's ideology isn't to take over Europe. It's for smaller government and less But tax. they are still ideologues. They don't want to compromise. He literally, he used... You could call Elizabeth the Warren an ideologue. Both sides have ideologues. When you don't compromise, you're one an ideologue. Make, what's that? When you don't compromise, when you don't reach across the aisle, when you don't participate one, in the one democratic could, one process, could argue, you one are could argue an the ideologue. opposite. One could argue that's having a strong belief system. And, you know, Obama's on TV all the time saying, oh, I'm not going to compromise with Congress. I'm just going to do it myself. No, and why is that a good thing? Well, all right, Andy Dean is absolutely right. So if you don't compromise, you're an ideologue. If you're an ideologue, you're a Nazi, only if you're a Tea Party. You're not an ideologue if you don't compromise and you're, you're not a Nazi if you're an ideologue and you don't compromise and you're a Democrat, like Obama. Listen to Jay Carney. Does this sound familiar to you? How this plays out obviously depends on the actions that the Congress takes, but it is absolutely the president's position that you know, he won't negotiate uh, under threat of default or continued shutdown of the government uh, you know, budget priorities because the Republicans are interested in holding the economy hostage and the middle class hostage to try to achieve through that process what they could not achieve through uh, Congress in the past, through the courts, or through the ballot box. So there's Jay Carney explaining why the president won't negotiate, calling the other side hostage takers, they won't do this, they won't do that, so the president won't negotiate. Isn't that by, de by the definition of uh, Mr. Brooks an ideologue? And then doesn't that make him a Nazi? Now listen to the president himself talk about how we won't negotiate. This is back during the budget crisis and the debt ceiling. Watch. One thing I will not compromise over is whether or not Congress should pay the tab for a bill they've already racked up. If Congress refuses to give the United States the ability to pay its bills on time, the consequences for the entire global economy could be catastrophic. He won't negotiate. By Brooks, Max Brooks' definition, that's an ideologue. And an ideologue is a Nazi. Again, if you're a Tea Party member, if you're an ideologue and you're Barack Obama, if you're an ideologue and you're Jay Carney, if you're an ideologue and you're Nancy Pelosi, then you're just doing the right thing, baby. But, uh, you know, come on, Max. Uh, you would think you'd be better educated and come up with a better statement than that because it shows your extreme ignorance on The Steve Malsberg Show.